What is up, everybody? My name is Richard Terrell. I go by Kirby Kid, and you are watching Do Live. It's a daily stream show. We talk about game design here. We also talk about game design on the Discord. So if you are interested in either of those things, you need to head on over to all those beautiful links like Twitter and YouTube and Discord and join us. Um, all the links can be found on our website, designoriented.net, all one word. And uh, <clears throat> today we're going to continue with a, a series that we started a few days ago. It took a few days break. Uh, but we're talking about combat, and in order to talk better about combat, we realized we needed to get a better handle on skill. In order to get a better handle on the skill, I realized that we needed, what do we need? To break it down in a more fine-tuned, more accurate, more fun, better way for everybody. So let me just show you that chart. Wow. Pull it up in a second. So, uh, I use a D-card system. It's a system I made a while ago. Uh, and when I was devising this system in particular, uh, my brother and I created these different video games to showcase each particular facet of the skill so that, um, so that you can kind of show and prove it to yourself. So I'm going to be going over some of those games uh, today. So here is the chart for the Descartes system right there. Let's get rid of that. And then uh, here is... The download page all these games can be found here on the download page on my old blog critical gaming we're gonna hit up dexterity today which is why I brought a whole bunch of fun toys to take a look at so back to this dexterity the sub facets include speed control harmony efficiency stamina and power some of these shifted around a little bit when I since I first came up with it but essentially we just need different ways to break down uh, the ways that people control their body uh, speed is taking a task and figuring out how quickly you can repeat that task uh, for a given task. Control is your ability to um, accurately execute some kind of activity, motion, or task uh, to various ranges of effectiveness. So like, you know, loudness and softness when you're playing a musical instrument or uh, force when you're lifting something or things like that. Like being able to hit various fine-tuned degrees very accurately. Uh, harmony is a way in which you use your body, how it interferes with other things that you do with your body. So, you know, a really quick and easy example before we go more into it is if you have a technique for playing the piano that involves using your nose like this. My old piano teacher used to say he, he never cared how we played the note, right? Uh, with their nose or their feet or whatever. But as long as we... Um, got the right tone and we got it in the right rhythm then all is fair game right I mean this piano is just a tool right and if the object is making music then we need to do whatever it takes to make sure that sounds the best when we do it neat idea uh, but essentially the idea of harmony is well the techniques that you use to pull off a particular uh, motion or a particular part of your uh, particular technique if that gets in the way of doing other things that you need to do at the same time then that's not harmonizing well. So sure, you can play the piano with your nose, but if you can't quite get your other hand in the right place at the right time, then that's not it's not good harmony. Uh, efficiency is just sort of um, it's more of a look at how much energy you expend, right? You can do a lot of the other things like be fast, hit those hit those various marks of control, uh, have a lot of harmony, so you can do the other necessary muscle activities without interference. But you could just burn a whole bunch of energy doing it. Uh, people burn out all the time. Well, so like, efficiency is just sort of how much energy and how, how you use your muscles and, and how you move your body and how well that works together just sort of uh, low energy. Now, stamina is how much total energy you have. It's a little different than efficiency. You can, if you just had all the stamina in the world, it really doesn't matter how efficient you are. But if you had a very little amount of stamina, then being highly efficient is very important. But those two things kind of work together. And power is just like raw strength. Just a measure of your raw strength, right? If you don't have enough power, if you can't lift something, then um, it kind of takes you out of consideration if it requires X amount of force or X amount of strength. I got the camera in a new place so it can actually look at the piano, so I need to remember to look at that every now and then. However, for the time being, I'm going to jump into the game that my brother and I built, Descartes, or uh, Dexterity from BES. Where is that thing? I'm going to play it and then I'm going to 
also jump back and forth between these examples. I got my piano here. I got my violin down on the floor. I brought some uh, art supplies if I can get a good camera angle for that. And we possibly can look at, um, you know, handwriting and, and fine motor skills like that. So uh, that was one of the original designs and purposes of the Descartes system, creating a system that can uh, that can assess all these different activities in the same using the same scale and the same weight, right? Uh, not just making a system for talking about video games or competitive things or whatever. Like we want to get our our brains wrapped around all of it. So that is essentially what we do. So I'm booting up the game now. Ipon yeah, kabe hukte mama ni takusan. Random Japanese. Don't do that. Especially random Japanese rapping. Yeah, I mean, I'm allowed to rap, so that's half good. <laughs> Game capture, let's go. You hear the music? I don't, I don't hear anything. Cool. I can zoom in now. And I can move this over here. You can't hear anything? Do you have your sound in? Or do you not? You're not watching the stream, okay. I'm not watching the stream. Okay, here we go. I think this song is like typewriter song. But you can't hear it, so it doesn't matter. So this is Dexterity. It's a game. We're going to test our Dexterity. We're going to start with the mouse. <laughs> Look at this wacky doodle UI I made a long time ago. I was like obsessed, and I still am, with um, interfaces and menus being like organic. And you can like slide from one area to the other like you're, you're on a gigantic desktop. I'm looking down at your table. And then um, you can just kind of move from one area to the next. So I made the UI that kind of does the same thing. So here we go. Mouse, mouse moves up, and then it kind of becomes this little thing on the top part. You're like, wow, that's so cool. I did not know what I was doing with the UI, and I still don't. So each one of these games, you can see the different facets it tests. Right here I had five. Which one did I add? Sp speed, control, harmony, efficiency, stamina. Oh, yeah, so I couldn't test power in this game, so I just took it out. Because there's no way, there's nothing on the standard keyboard or mouse that allows me to test strength. So I'm like, well, you get five points instead of six. It works. And then each one of these tests different things. So speed, we're going to look at a test that only tests speed. Let's see what happens. Scroll up as quickly as you can before time runs out. So you just like scroll right like this. Do I have to click first? What is this interface? Let's see. Oh yeah, so like <laughs> bad UI. So here, here's the <laughs> here's the first game. This is an A test for test one. So you click it, and then you go like this, right? And now it's obvious that the game's going, and it wasn't obvious before. Okay, 60, 67, right? You can take these tests as much as you want, um, like this. Wait, how do you reset it? What did I do to reset menu? Nope. So you can click test one and you try to get it all the way up. 63, you can take it as many times as you want. So how? Getting worse and worse, cool. So how do we get back to our menu? Oop. Bad UI. The menu's like right here in this left click. So test one was that, test two is scroll up and down to match the given number before time runs out. So you click it, and you start here, you got this much time, and you have to hit this number. So like up to two, up to seven, down to five, down to three, up to nine. It doesn't count unless you pause on it too, you know, good game design, right? Not letting you cheese it. 
my mouse is a, my mouse was a little sensitive. Sometimes when I don't even touch it, it scrolls itself. So not the best hardware right here. Okay, so that's my random score. But this one's kind of neat. Uh, a lot of games don't really test your ability to scroll accurately on the mouse, but it's it's a neat little fun little game that's pretty easy to understand. Let's go back to the menu. But, but, so that tests speed, control. Control is a big deal right there. You can overshoot or undershoot it very easily. Uh, and it also involves a little bit of efficiency because... What is it? I mean, yeah, efficiency and harmony just a little bit because there's ways of scrolling that you could certainly uh, develop some techniques there to make it a, a lot more effective, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, click back and forth on the colored square as quickly as you can before time runs out. There's only an A version. Yeah, there's only an A version. And we tried to minimize reflexes as much as possible, so it actually shows you the next square before you uh, click on need to click on it, just so that there's no surprise. Like, where do I go now? Very simple game, very easy to understand. No feedback or sound or anything apparently. <laughs> Okay, score 30, right. Uh, let's go back to the menu. So that one tests a lot of the same things that the one test before, but a little bit more, what is it? Do you, uh, a little bit less control, and a little bit more stamina. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know, there's a lot of stress stresses that get put on your hand when you're doing things, right? Even using a computer or playing a video game, and in proper technique, can really come back to bite you and uh, a lot of people have reported uh, carpal tunnel like issues and, and hand joint issues when playing excessive video games uh, they have recommended exercises and all kinds of things so even though this is just a, a simple little computer game the stuff it's stressing and testing and hopefully measuring is still pretty legitimate like you can still develop good technique have good efficiency and good stamina even for something like clicking a mouse next one Speed and stamina. Left click as quickly as you can before time runs out. Play all three versions to test your stamina. Okay. So this is score 10 to go. And right there, I just changed my hand grip because my normal mouse clicking was not fast enough. I'm bouncing my entire hand up and down. That's a 62. And then you can play B. So left click as quickly as you can before time runs out. So this is 20 seconds. I think the first one was 10. Let's just check that real quick. No! No! Yeah, 10, and then the next one is 20. So then, obviously, stamina is going to measure the difference. Good old feedback. But yeah, these games are all available to download on my old website. Uh, if you play them, be sure to let me know. Snap a screenshot of your scores page. Uh, I keep track of those things and just collect data just because that's what I do and it's interesting to me and it should be to you left click 30 seconds my hands getting tired let's go <laughs> so yeah I could develop a different technique for clicking here like using multiple fingers right that certainly changes the grip of my hand uh, these are techniques that allow me to ex uh, extend my stamina or they're just more efficient so I don't use as much energy that would tire my hand out in the first place all kinds of different things to consider I'm still getting tired. <laughs> probably should have not mounted, uh, rested my elbow on the table. And I should probably lower my shoulder like they tell me to do when I'm playing violin. That would help, but <sighs> no joke, right? Doing anything repeatedly for more than 10 seconds, uh, no joke, even if it's something simple. So that's keep your mouse on target as it quickly moves through the course. Again, minimizing reflexes here. You have four courses to deal with. And we start with A. You can see the course, and you're like, okay, 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 okay. And then you size yourself up, you know, do some stupid shoulder exercises, and then you go for it. 46, right? Next course. Go. This game probably should run at a much higher frame rate for this one, but it doesn't matter. It works. So this, so, oh, no! So the, obviously you're, you're testing different motions. Diagonal motions are harder. So like our arm, if you don't know anything about ergonomics or um, body mechanics, ball socket joint does a really good job at, you know, pretending like you're about to punch somebody by warming up your arm. 
uh, like Alex from Street Fighter, but circles are really good for <laughs> ball joints. This is not a ball joint, so this is good at doing this, and your hand can rotate and your fingers can rotate. So with the combination, you can do all kinds of different motions, right? If you're dancing or something like that, but you don't you don't get like a full smooth range. Like to coordinate a, a horizontal like joint like this hinge with a ball joint, you can get these curves, but you tend to get certain kind of curves easier than others, just to how it works. Uh, it's a lot harder to basically, um, if you've ever tried to draw a circle with your hand sort of stuck to the table and you try to draw it with just your wrist, it's not easy. Uh, that's why artists always tell you to draw circles by using your circular shoulder and this becomes much easier. So again, a little bit of knowledge there, a little bit of understanding about how your body works, but essentially these tests here are testing different angles that uh, that are either common or uncommon to your natural wrist motion. Yeah, so like that. And the final test, let's see what it looks like. I think it's a box that concentrically goes in or something like that, cool. I would kind of have a memory. See, these are hard to do with the, the non-circular Oh my gosh, that's hard. So yeah, anything that's not a circle, when you're doing your wrist, you're kind of moving your fingers like this, like in and out, and then slightly rotating. But as you rotate your wrist, this is actually rotating, as you can see, in a circle, in an arc, so that you have to compensate as you move. That's why it's hard. And it's why I made it like this. It's too bad. Okay. Dun -dun. Keep your mouse on the target as it slowly moves to the course. So this one, as it quickly moves, as it slowly. Same course, smaller target. Okay, I'll do the rest. Uh, this is kind of like, um, good thing that this game doesn't let you go full screen because I think the ratio here is important for keeping at least that the same uh, but you know you could change your mouse sensitivity you know it can only create it can only test so much and you only have so much control over what the player can do with their, their PC but that's not a problem it's just something to consider so that the ups and downs are so much easier for me because I can basically stretch my fingers out. The left and rights are not easy. I'm not even singing it properly. Probably should have adjusted the camera. I don't even know if you can see. You can see my face. Too bad for everyone. Ouch. See, like I'm tensing up even trying to do these motions. So, like my technique very poor. Okay, back to the menu. Those are all the tests for the mouse. Uh, we go back to the title page. It's testing motion. Now we're gonna test a lot of your individual digit control. Uh, you can see here so far. That's fun. So here are three different tests, each with A, B, C, Ds, A, B, and an A, B test. Um, rapidly hit the keys in the indicated sequence. Okay, so, you know, we're gonna warm up again. Uh, I don't think you need a keyboard cam because this is, no one cares. Okay, so you press, it, you know, it starts off like this. You got five seconds, I think you press whatever they tell you. A. Oh, yeah, you press each of them over and over rapidly. Okay, S, 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 S. And you try to keep your normal um, typing position, your normal. You try to press each key with the, the finger that you're supposed to press with it instead of just using the same finger and going down the line. And this kind of tests how dexterous each individual digit is and if they're even or not. J. And then it also tests your left and right hand uh, balance. Wow, my middle finger is not so good. Okay, 
And I can bounce my entire arm for better results. Space bar is cool because if you put two thumbs on it, it should be the highest number. 45. 40. Okay, so that's the first test, right? You go back. Menu, man, some bad UI. No wonder nobody can figure this out. So now you rapidly hit the keys in the indicated sequence. So A, S, A, S, A, S. Like that. And you're just moving back and forth between the two fingers. Uh, these are inspired by a lot of um, piano drills that my teacher is like, my teacher used to uh, give to me. Uh, the individual connections between fingers, the individual ways your fingers uh, create sequences, FJ. Um, the individual way that your body sort of coordinates and passes the information back and forth. It's important. Let's do obviously my best. I, I use those two fingers a lot. I'll play a song for you in a second. But the number that I got the highest score on. Ah, these are my worst. Oh my gosh. No. Not that bad. So press that in space bar. Space bar A. Okay, so let me just do the fly-by cam right over here for the piano. It's hopefully it's not too hard to see. Something like that. I didn't even know how I set this up before. And I slid it down like that. That's good enough. So. These are the fingers that I got the highest score on. And these are the fingers I got the the worst score on. Was it a 44? You can hear the difference. This is my average score finger. And this is the finger that I did the best on. There's a lot of songs I play that do this. And there's another one. And uh, there's another one. Um, I need to remember the notes. But there's a lot of songs that I trill with these two fingers. But inter interestingly enough, uh, these two fingers, if you can see that, these two fingers on my left hand are what I use for a violin. So these, my left hand is really good at moving sequences like that, but my right hand is just better at trills. So that was just a little, we'll get back to the piano later, but this kind of explains why my scores are the way they are and what I can do about them, which is not much. <laughs> okay, let's do another test. Let's do another test. Boop, 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 boop. ASD, okay. So yeah, now we're getting closer and closer to rolling. Some keyboards don't have a very good job of um, releasing the key and allowing another key to be pressed uh, just due to its uh, hardware. So all kinds of weird considerations that I didn't consider, but you might. It, depending on if your scores are completely disappointing to you. Yep, that hand. This is one of my weakest because of that right pinky. Not so good at it. And the rhythm in which I'm adding the numbers are not so um, smooth either. That's probably why I can't play these certain parts of the song. Yeah, I even sound chunky. That's terrible. Okay, so those are my scores. Next, and this is like the full <laughs> ASCF, ASCF. So much easier to do this. This is like probably gonna be one of my highest. And this one's probably gonna be high.
This one's not going to be so high, but it's, it's pretty smooth. It's not, it's not too bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, KLJ Spice Bar. It just kind of goes down the line, as you can see. And then L Space Bar A. Wow, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's awkward. Not really. Then this is awkward. Then Space Bar A. Cool. Scores. Numbers. Test two. Press all the home row keys and lift the indicated buttons. Again, uh, you'll hear it, but this is a classic uh, exercise where you put all your fingers down the piano, then you just lift one finger on each hand, and then keep all the others down. Definitely something that when I first did it as a kid, I'm like, this is weird, and I've never, nothing has ever made me hold this many buttons down and do this with my fingers. So now I'm making you do it. Pretty simple. Press all the home row keys and lift this one. So this, I don't think this works on most keyboards. Let's see if it even works. Yeah, so I think if you're on a laptop, the laptop has a a different way that it passes the key information to the the um the computer and the way that some keyboards work is they have a limited number of pipeline slash bit circuits that they can transmit information and they assume that you're never going to hold like more than a few keys down at a time so when i hold eight on my keyboard it actually overloads the whole thing and nothing gets through it, the game doesn't even can't even tell i'm holding them all down so this cannot be done Likewise, this one with only one hand, type the indicated key in mode, me, uh, in mode B. You must hold a key while typing. Let's try this. One hand. L U X I O Y W C Z J B T. I probably should have uh, spelled out the letters ahead of time instead of making you react to each one on this one, just like I was talking about before, but that's okay. J, F, V, A, B, T, Y. A lot of people can't do this. Uh, they, a lot of people, when they hit individual keys, even when they're hunting and pecking, they don't use the finger that's closest to it, and then when they do, they kind of like reset back to neutral instead of just letting that hand position stay where it is and just figuring out where to go next. So that's kind of why I designed this one to be like this. Because I like the idea of just typing with one hand like this and just flying around the keyboard. I can't really do it that fast, but. So hold Q, press Z, okay. So this is really getting to some cool territory. Hold C and press H, G, E, U. This really tests like how your finger gymnastics, as they say, work. G, A, S, hold L, Z, G, H, S, K, hold that thingy, V, R, F, R, G, all still with one hand, and it's over, cool. And that's all of these tests. Thank you, Dexterity. You're gone. So, some of my scores from back in the day, back when my keyboard worked, it looked a little bit like this. Um, not the best with the mouse. Not, wasn't a really big keyboard gamer or key PC gamer, but with the keyboard, because it's much more like the piano, my scores are relatively high. Um, that's just how it goes. So I think the whole the whole game works out pretty well. Look at all those numbers you can just think about and crunch in your head if you're that kind of a person. But um, I think it tests and it demonstrates exactly what I wanted it to. Uh, you feel the stamina test, you feel the control test, you feel the speed test. And then you feel like harmony and efficiency, especially in those last keyboard ones where you're just kind of all over the place. Really cool. 
So that's dexterity. Play it. Oh, main genie's in the, the thingy. Is this a programmed puzzle game? Is there a way to test strength on a mouse keyboard, though? How many punches it takes to break your keyboard? Yeah, I think all gamers are testing that when they rage uh, on PC games, so no need for me to add an additional test for that. Um, so now, fun examples. Um, gotta set up my camera in a slightly different position, which is no problem. So I may not keep this in the YouTube edit. This is just going to be me noodling around for a little bit and uh, trying to get my camera to work. Do the noodle dance. That's right. Do, 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 do. How does this thing work? Like that. And I can pull it down like this. I wish I had just like a floating camera pod like from the animes. That would fix all my problems. I don't even know how I set that up before. How did I do it? Okay, that's good enough. My chair is too low, too. Like this, this song, it's uh, Chopin Minute Waltz. Tons of trills. Where's the camera? Between these two fingers, right? So you'll hear it even at the beginning. It's not a trill. Well, it's not, that's a trill. And then it does four fingers. Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And two move up like this. One up with this finger and down with these two fingers. So. So there's a trill there. There's a trill right there too. And trill here. Trill. Cool. Uh, other cool things. Uh, I wonder if you can see the yeah with my finger, my hands. I should probably blow up the the, the webcam view, right? Uh, but it's not easy. Let's see if I can do that. It'd be great if I had a webcam view scene already created that I didn't repurpose for Mario Maker. Oh, do I? No. It's Mario Maker. Like I said, easy enough to edit, uh, remove this, blow this up, <laughs> random Mario Maker background, that's fine. People complain a whole bunch. Where's my face? Down here. People complain a whole bunch about combos and, and inputs in fighting games and motion controls and stuff when they're just like big babies and small babies. Not to discriminate against big babies. All kinds of babies. That's what they are. 
But um, with piano and learning all these different songs, you like do whatever it takes for each individual song, even if you don't ever use that scale again for anything else. Like it doesn't matter. Like that's, I mean, each song is its own specific set of notes that you're never gonna play that same exact way in other songs. So each unique thing may deserve something unique in return to, to pull it off. Like this song. So you can see my fingers. Normally you play stuff like this like. Or you use it with the uh, sustain pedal, which I don't have hooked up right now. But with this particular part, they you want to play staccato in the right hand, individual notes, but this one you want to be um, sustained. So you have to do a manual sustain by holding the keys down yourself. And there's two keys. And then when you hit the third, you let go of the first one. So you can always hear a little bit of both in one here. You have to do that all with one hand. And in order to pull that off, you have to pretty much spider around your fingers like that. Where you go over and then slide down over and then you crimp and then you let go and then you have your fingers go like like where is it like this over and over so like you do whatever it takes so what song is that i can't even play sideways That the left hand on that song is like you play the, the notes spread out like this, and then you cross over with a four. You play a little cluster of notes right here with these three fingers, right? With these two fingers. And then you spread it back out to go back down. It's really hard. <laughs> You're doing so many different kind of far stretches. And then creeping your hand up to do these. And then spreading it back out to do these. This is, this is a really cool, so here's another interesting thing that you do. You can stress different notes just by putting more uh, pressure on it, making it louder, or doing other things, other different kind of techniques, like if you're just being all smooth like this, you can pick any one of those notes and then play them staccato. keeping the other ones down if I can even do that. That's hard. So likewise we do, let's see. The melody is actually in the right pinky and it just stays up here so you can soften everything else. Like 
that. Uh, it's a lot easier sounding when I put the sustain in. I'm gonna go grab that. And not fall over. I never remember which one this is. Salt. Maybe this one. Cool, that's it. So that song sounds completely different with this with the pedal. Repeated notes when you're holding the sustain pedal build on each other because the note is still sort of vibrating and you just add more force to it so you're kind of keeping it going. Everything else slowly fades so even when you have a really loud low note you can hear this note coming louder and louder on the top so even if it's or, add any more force to this top note but you can slowly hear the two volumes just switch places understanding things like that and figuring out how that affects how you want to play the note how you hold your hand and how it affects all the other notes you play it's just getting to some real uh, detailed nitty-gritty stuff but the piano is just there for you to master right if it's able to be done you're probably able to control it somehow and then the better musicians will do that. And the cool part is too, right now I'm doing three different dynamic levels. This is top note, which is a melody. And this is low note that starts everything off. And then all the other notes in between are even less important, you know, according to me right now. So I play those even softer. stress internal melodies whenever you're playing stuff like that part right there let's see if I can get back to it so it starts off like this Normally the melody's on the top, like, but this time the melody, the top line isn't moving, and the, the melody's actually in the middle, which does all the motion. So right there, you want the middle to sort of rise up and the top to die down. <laughs> I'm having a problem getting back into the middle of these random parts of songs that I haven't played in a long time. But essentially, you can make any part of a song, any finger sing, and you can carry a melody even inside of other running lines. One of my favorite examples. So 
it sounded like a lot of crazy things going on, but really it's the same melody that gets played three times stacked on top of each other. It starts off like this. Then the middle voice takes over. So that's all three going on at the same time. And my teacher told me, like, you have three choices. You can either accentuate what's going on in just one of those melody lines, or you can pass the focus down to where every time the melody restarts, you play that part the loudest, and then you pass it down again, and then you can kind of play around with the, the mix afterwards. So if I try to make the melody as loud as possible, random things that I think about when playing musical instruments, drawing with my, with my hands and trying to do graphic art, uh, when I'm designing control schemes, when I'm thinking about motion controls, uh, when I'm trying to do all that cool stuff, right? Everything sort of Everything that I consider comes from such a broad range of experiences, right? Uh, and even stuff like like pin tricks, right? I first started learning about these when I was in um, fifth grade. And I saw somebody, what were they doing? Was it this? My brother was doing this, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I practiced for a long time to figure out exactly how to get the pin to spin like that. And the cool part is, like, your fingers hold the pin like this, but really it's only the top finger that moves and you can feel the friction and then you realize that you have a lot more control over exactly how much it um, rotates on one end or how little it rotates all no, with the control of your finger. And um, that's fine, fine motor control, right? Just these tiny little differences. Uh, if you put too much power into it, the pin will slide out of your grip. But if you're like that, but if you're better, you can feel that happening and then adjust the way you do your, your finger roll to kind of put it back into control and stuff like that. Uh, so over the years, what's another one? So yeah, I saw this girl in fifth grade doing this kind of where you put the pin on the lower area and you flick it up to your, your upper fingers. Not too crazy, right? Just a simple flick. And I was like, that's super cool practice that took me a while I had to like use both hands and like how does it work how does it work but essentially I uh, learned that one and you know over the years collecting different ones there were some cool YouTube videos a long time ago that had some neat ones I've been working on nothing too seriously but whenever you write a lot or draw a lot these are the kinds of things you do the kind of things I do um, so then there's another kind where you can spin it around your thumb right your thumb right here and you just give it a twirl and because you hold the pin past its uh, center point which is right about here when you flick it it actually balances while it's flicking around your thumb and because it's balanced here it doesn't have too much sort of outward force it's actually using that force to wrap around and then by the time it gets around you catch it again so 
like that. And you can clearly see it, the long part of the pin out from my hand. And then after it spins, it's the, the my finger right here is perfectly in the middle because it's, it's what balance is. Different pins have different weights, stuff like that. But essentially, essentially, that was another interesting technique that I picked up as a kid. And then there's this one I saw where you roll the pin down and you roll it back up. You roll it down, and you roll it back up, and if you need help, you use your thumb. If not, you just kind of use your fingers, and you can do it the opposite way, which I'm not so good at. So I started making up some of my own, right? The the spin into a reverse spin that goes over the top of the fingers, right? So you like I do the normal spin, and then when I grab it here, I flick my hand back so that it lines up on the top of my hand spins like this over my fingers and I lift my pinky up just a little bit to catch it like this and then bring it back around like that and then reset the whole thing and uh, other techniques where I think I'm the only one I've seen doing this maybe not but like you use multiple pins right uh, I'll, I'll pick a slightly different color green and red and then you use the different parts of your hand right so the greens being held by my thumb and you flick the red up on top, rests on top, and as it's sliding down, you bring the green up, and then you get it ready for a flick. Do that, flick it on top, bring the red down, and you alternate like that. I'm, I haven't seen people do that, but it's essentially like, oh, if this technique only uses these fingers in this way, what else can I do with my hand without freaking interfering because I have no control over my muscles? And just little things like that just picking those up over time. The, the last cool one I saw was this really neat one where the guy like, or you can do a figure eight, right? Which is not too hard. And then he turned that into a reverse situation where he rolls the, the pin down his fingers like that then flicks it up on the top part of his hand then rolls it back just controlling the tip of it, right? And using these circular motions. I can kind of do that one, but not on these pins. Um, so yeah, dexterity, a lot of people make this, I guess this is a really important part of the discussion that I probably should have put earlier before I knew it around for so long. Maybe I can cut that out, but it doesn't matter. A lot of people make this false dichotomy between brain and body, mind and dexterity, um, probably because they overemphasize one in their life and not the other. Um, people who play musical instruments, people who play sports, people who do art, things like that should have a much more direct experience with training their muscles and understanding their body and using their mind to do so than people who just like you know play strategy games and think they're smart um, yeah so like in, in a very general sense I think that schism that split that mentality comes from sort of nerds versus jocks and whenever that idea came about i don't know how old it is but it's been around since i was a kid uh 80s maybe 60s 70s it's just like oh the nerds aren't good at sports so like they are good at reading and getting good grades and chess and the jocks are good at sports so they focus on what seemed to be the opposite set of skills which is being strong and running fast and hitting people and you're like well sports are competitive strategy games right uh your role in that may not necessarily be in the hot seat of making the most crucial decisions but when you're on a team everyone has a role to play and when you're practicing your strategies and building up your 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 team synergy you're basically becoming one unified body uh with one you know mentality or attitude or goal in mind and that's pretty representative of a, of a large body versus a small body. But then, yeah, yeah like you're, you're using your mind out there, you're using your mind to train better, to think better, to think through problems clearly. If, you're not, if your mind's not in it and you're cluttered and clouded, it doesn't really matter how much um, practice you have sometimes or how much muscle memory you have, like your mind can wreck you instantly if you're not in the right headspace, you've had a bad attitude. So really, your mind's always in it. You always carry your mind with you. I don't know what you're trying to do in life that you don't need your mind for, but uh, I figured everything that's skill-based in life, you get more advantages and you do better once you put more of yourself into it, mind, body, anything else included. 
uh, school days isn't something that happens to you. It's something you go the extra mile uh, for and engage with, or rather your education is something you do that with. School is just kind of like a building, but you, the purpose of going to that building is to get an education, and that's something you have to put yourself into. Sitting in the chair, rolling your eyes, barely paying attention, and just barely doing what it takes to get a passing grade on, on the on the test is not an education. So, like, you're not really giving it much of anything. So, to me, just about everything in life is a combination of mind and body. Um, even if you just want to even if you just want to do a spelling test, right, or if you want to play esports, a lot of the people in esports uh, or gamers in general may have had some kind of stigma for a particular body type or whatever. But now, with the rise of esports, man, you see a lot of different types of people. Some people are bodybuilders, right? A lot of people get in shape and get fit and stay healthy, and a lot of people realize that training your body helps you focus your mind. You're like, oh, I wonder if your mind and your body are connected to the same thing. Yeah, of course, it's, it's you. Uh, for crying out loud, that shouldn't be a, a shocker. It shouldn't be a surprise. But yeah, like training your body, making sure that you eat well, sleep well, uh, and that you house your brain slash mind in as um, effective of a shell as possible. Like that just seems obvious, right? So I don't think there's that big of a difference um, between, or there's no need to sort of overemphasize the difference between mind and body. Um, especially considering to improve your dexterity, you're going to need to understand a whole lot of things about your body and, and have the right attitude and, and practice in a very mindful, focused way. And likewise, to improve your mind, you got to do other kind of bodily things to help you, and it's just all connected. So... If it, if it requires the same sim, same techniques to learn a strategy game as it is to like learn how to f do free throws in a basketball uh, game, then how different can they really be? And is it really that important to emphasize that difference just because of whatever bad blood was between different groups? Not worth it to me. Not worth it. Uh, my violin. How we out of tune? draw a picture the other day I might uh... this thing isn't very good for the strumming So a lot of a lot of things with the violin, it's a really difficult instrument for beginners. Uh, one of the things that you're struggling to do with the violin right off the gate is to produce good tones. Uh, piano, you get it for free. That's a good tone. That's a good tone. Uh, violin. And not only does tuning your instrument something you have to sort of do yourself and keep keep track of and be mindful of, but what is it? Using the bow. All right, this complicated thing. And understanding and manipulating it, it's this like long instrument. So this is like an extension of your body more so than a key is on a piano. A key on a piano is like a button on a device or a computer system. But what you have here with the violin it's the instrument that's directly moving against the strings to produce the sound that you want to produce. And with piano, we're not controlling the hammer. We're not controlling the angle that the hammer strikes the, the strings inside. And you're much more removed, much, many more steps removed from that process. On the violin, it's all you. I just move this off my face. Mine's all out of tune. 
but I don't want to tune it. Just, we'll go back over here. If you can see that, I have like half of them missing on my good bow. It's because I'm a little too wild with this thing. But essentially, when I, when I was a kid, I went to a violin camp one time or whatever. And um, one of the things they made us practice was just getting really controlled long bow sustains. So something like... It's a lot harder than it seems. You know, like even, even that tonality, that quality was like wavering. Because as you move your arm out, like I told you before with the arm attached to a, two different kinds of joints or sockets, um, it's really hard to get something that's straight using your body. Your body is made up of squishy organs and ball socket joints and hinges and stuff that are actually rotating. Everything's always circular and rotating. So if you want to take this violin and draw your bow perpendicular to it, straight, as you move your arm down, you have to change your wrist, your arm, and your shoulder, different amounts and to various degrees as it's happening. <laughs> To keep even pressure going for the whole way, you have to add pressure using your finger and weight using your wrist while it's also moving to do the other things. You may even have to move the position that the string, the bow is touching the string up or down like this just to get that tone quality. So if I'm naturally loud at the bass, I may start up a little higher. As I move down, I might move it closer to the bridge to maintain an even sound. That's all much, much, much more complicated than this. Oh, are you serious? Oh yeah, it was a D. Okay. I should tune you. vibrato so in piano you don't have vibrato it's just one solid tone uh, created by three strings so it makes a nice rounded even sound but when you have one string per note uh, it's a lot easier to be off 
especially when you're putting your fingers down to make those those notes in the first place. So we use vibrato to essentially average out the sound sometimes. So even if we come in a little high, we can vibrato and kind of rock it downward. Like that, and it helps. It helps when uh, in an orchestra, everyone's doing that. So the average, 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 average sinks down into the correct note much better. So here's another cool thing about the violin. I talked a little bit about this in my series on um, controller design and considering all these different ways to design controls and what that means. Um, are you designing your game's controls more like a piano? Or are you designing them more like a violin? A piano, there's only one key that can play this note. Right there. Well, you can hear it. You can't see it. But with the violin, that note is here. That note is here. It's a different string. Same note, and you can also play it here. All the way up on the last string that's normally this deep. But if you go up high enough, like that. So you have options. And you can also tune your violin up and down to change even what your bass notes are. So like, don't even worry about that. But essentially, with the extra redundancy, you can do interesting things like, uh, let's see. Uh, so what is that? And you can decide, well, depending on the next notes I need to hit, do I need to be on this one? Or can I be on this one? And they sound different. And there's pros and cons to every every method, but um, I like both piano and violin for their unique input differences. So uh, let's see. One of my favorite sort of songs about learning new positions for your hands, because you know. The higher you shift up like that, the harder it is to play in general. The less familiar people are with these really high notes. And there's this one song that we played an excerpt for for auditions uh, for all region. And it's just like...
Oh, what is it? All the way up there. <laughs> it's so hard to remember without the the music. What? Well, position that hurts my arm <laughs> oh my gosh it's and you have to get your wrist all the way around like this and it hurts ouch I shouldn't do that <laughs> ah but that song technically can be played much lower like instead of like this is the only time you can play this note be all up here you don't have to be all the way up there but they said you did so we had to uh whoever decided to write that you know kudos for hurting me but um some t some things you just have to deal with so yeah the violin cool very difficult instrument to play um just listening to the tonality i mean i guess with all music you're really listening to the cleanness and the, the crispness of each note and how each note is expressed. Know, random stories about learning right when I first started to learn piano I had teachers and lessons from the beginning but when I first started learning violin it was more of a communal thing so you kind of get your instrument you're in class you're listening to the teacher you're expected to practice on your own not a lot of individual attention so a lot of what I learned with the violin was just kind of winging it I've had multiple teachers though but just not constantly like I have with the piano so you know I feel like I developed a lot of bad habits and just didn't understand a lot of things and the practice drills that they made me do I, I did them sure but I felt like I was sitting on a lot of bad habits just based on my own experimentation and some of the frustrating parts about learning is so it's one thing I realized is what you learn doesn't just go away. And you're like, yeah, I haven't played the violin in years, so all those bad habits, I don't even remember them. Well, they're there. They're still there. They're just waiting for you. Uh, there's there's oh, little, very little about... There's very little that time can do to erase bad habits and unlearn things. So, so in order for me to get better at the violin, right, I have to really do a, uh, a, an assessment of what I've learned, you know, what, how I play, what I think, go back to a lot of basics, do a lot of drills, just really build that up, which is hard. 
uh, when you don't have like the motivation or the structure or like an orchestra to play for or with so that your efforts can be directly beneficial to something it's really hard to just be entirely by yourself and then want to do drills right and want to do practice drills um, but that's really where the real discipline comes from so in general I don't play a lot of my music unless I'm focused enough to take it seriously enough to learn well or not get more bad habits at the very least um, but I, I've always feel like it's waiting for me right I'm not abandoning it like clearly I can still play but that's a different story altogether uh, yeah I don't think I'll do the the art the, you want to learn how to draw amazing art um, I don't think I'll do that part of the stream because I can't even get a good camera angle for it but maybe if Adrian pops uh, on the chat later I'll show him this, I'll draw a picture that I dreamed up and I want to work on and maybe I'll show you a little bit of the process of me doing that because um, you know all the all the images on critical gaming I made myself and all the artwork on um, the Starseed Observatory I made myself um, just different kinds of art, mixed media kind of stuff. Star Seed Observatory. That's a real picture of the night sky of a real observatory. And I put star seed blocks in it and then it fades just like the day and the nighttime. Or nighttime and more nighttime. Uh, all the art you see here. You know, digital art, mix, mixing and matching different kinds of mediums. Um, it's, it's kind of stuff I did on my blog a lot, but I started as just like graphic uh, artist, pen and paper. Don't do a lot with paint, but that's probably something I'll show in another stream. But you know, thanks for joining me so far. Uh, we got more to do. And the next one up is timing. And once I tackle dexterity and timing, I'll show you something cool from Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about why turn-based games I don't consider in this combat discussion. So until then, I'll see you guys next time.